Right now at 5, police say he faked his own death and left the area. Today, they tracked down a missing businessman. Another local businessman facing rough waters today. Gene Connolly fires back at his accuser. New developments to yesterday's deadly bus crash involving two local kids. What may have been the cause? Plus, we're going to take you live to where the produce is fresh and the price may be right. Local students sue their school. And a big Hollywood star headed for divorce courts all right now. You're watching KDK TV News at 5. Good evening, everyone. He vanished more than three years ago, leaving behind a bloodstained van and a big mystery. But tonight, we know where John Iannone is. FBI agents have arrested the missing businessman from the North Hills, and they found him in Iowa. David Highfield is tracking this story and has the latest reports in at News Desk 2. David, what can you tell us? Well, Jennifer, the AI, or I should say FBI, got a tip that uh, John Iannone was hiding out at a hotel in Des Moines, Iowa, where they moved in last night, and now he is under arrest. Remember, Iannone disappeared three and a half years ago, leaving his wife and three kids behind. His car was found at the airport with blood stains inside, and he had left messages for his family telling them he was going on a cloak and dagger type mission for the government, but detectives eventually determined that his disappearance was faked rather than foul play, and that more than half a million dollars of investors' money was missing from his oil and gas lease business. He also, we also learned he claimed to be a Congressional Medal of Honor winner, but never served in the military at all. Now, all those alleged lies apparently caught up with him last night in Iowa. He's being arraigned right now on fraud charges. Coming up new at 6, more lies John Iannone may have told. These lies about his wife and three kids. Well, that part of the story coming up new at 6 o'clock. Jennifer? All right, David, for now, though, no other specifics as far as this tip that led the FBI to him in Iowa in the first place? Well, we do know that the tip apparently came in to the FBI here in Pittsburgh, and then they contacted agents out there. We don't don't know anything more than that at this point. All right, David, thanks very much. We'll see you at 6. Okay. Now, embattled regatta chairman Gene Connolly fires back at his accuser, saying he never misappropriated regatta funds. Connolly is accused uh, by a woman that he fired of misappropriating hundreds of thousands of dollars in regatta money. Investigative reporter Andy Sheehan broke the story last night. He joins us now with the latest. Andy? Ken and Jennifer, Gene Connolly is speaking out. He had captained the regatta for years without so much as a wave of controversy, but he faces a mutiny tonight from a former employee. For 19 years, Gene Conley has been skipper of the regatta, and for 19 years, he says he's been pumping his own private money into the event to keep it afloat. I had the uh, option to uh, put money in or let it uh, falter and uh, not have a regatta, and, and I chose to uh, keep the uh, regatta alive, and we have something that's very special. It's a world-class event. But while Conley may have been putting money into the regatta, fired Vice President Ira DeRico says he was also taking it out. $50,000 for the down payment on his opulent Moon Township mansion and $25,000 for the wedding of a friend's daughter. She also claims he pocketed $70,000 from the sale of a regatta boat. Conley says in all cases, the money was rightfully his. I loaned the regatta this money at absolutely no interest, and then uh, periodically, when my needs uh, are such, I uh, take some of the money out. But the mud gets even thicker. Dorico says Conley gave a hair transplant company a free booth at the regatta in return for a free hair transplant. Connolly says he gave Dorico a bonus for some cosmetic surgery of her own. She needed a nose job, a plastic surgery uh, nose uh, job, and I gave her $25,000 bonus. Board members like Councilman Bob O'Connor say they have faith in Connolly and believe he will be vindicated in an independent audit. And I know Mr. Connolly's been one of the most charitable people in Pittsburgh, and I, I hate to see this happen, so uh, we, I look forward to an audit. And now the police are involved. Conley told me today he's alerted police because he says DeRico has not returned her regatta car. He also says there's a number of files missing from the regatta offices. So this tale does get deeper and deeper, and we'll take you a little deeper into it tonight at 6. Ken? All right, Andy Sheehan, thanks. Well, some progress made today in setting up Pittsburgh's Civilian Police Review Board, but there's still a long way to go before any such board is ready to go, and the debate is still hot and heavy. Harold Hayes, live downtown with more on what happened today. Harold? 
Jennifer, council has agreed to a civilian review board bill, but the fight isn't over yet. There were five votes for it, and three council members abstained, and there could still be more debate before Monday's final vote. Today, though, council did agree that the board can go to court to compel an officer to testify, but they agree that the board does not have that power by itself. They agreed the staff of the Civilian Review Board should operate under civil service protection, and they agreed that juvenile detention officers and jail guards can serve in the two slots reserved for law enforcement experts on the seven-member board. But all that's certain during today's compromise is that a lot of issues will eventually be settled in court, and the suspicions generated during the referendum debate haven't gone away. We're the legislative body. It's on the table now. The, thing that's on the, the table citizens won this at the ballot and the legislation that the mayor has put on the table, the whole process is essentially to undercut this and to take out the power that the people want this body to have. Some of the dilemmas we're gonna have and we're gonna have a very serious problem with is the amounts and type of information that uh, were able to be released to the uh, uh, Civilian Review Board. Uh, there are very firm laws on that. And um, we would feel that some of it may be inappropriate. And we may, we may uh, strenuously object to uh, some of the information released. So the final formal vote is Monday. You haven't heard the end of it yet. New at 6, you'll hear some of the heated debate and how council reached some of its conclusions. That's new at 6. Okay, thanks, Harold. New information now on our lead story from yesterday, that bus full of children that plunged off Interstate 95 and into a river in Virginia. Some passengers told police that the driver appeared to have fallen asleep. Two local children who were on that bus are okay today, but they've yet to return to Pittsburgh. They are 11-year-old Lauren Henderson of Aliquippa and 13-year-old Eric Howes of Pittsburgh. Those passengers were on a black history tour. One person was killed, a young chaperone, someone very close to legendary civil rights figure Rosa Parks. Back here, nobody hurt but an awfully big mess. A truck hauling more than 40,000 pounds of cigarettes flipped over on I-79 in Robinson Township. This happened in the northbound lane, right near the newly repaired on-ramp from the Parkway West. The parents of two young teens in Westmoreland County have filed a $125,000 lawsuit against the Franklin Regional School District. They claim their daughters were punched, pushed, and threatened by fellow students at their school, and that the school did virtually nothing to stop the alleged abuse. Let's go live now to Mary Barecki in Westmoreland County for the latest. Mary? Jennifer, Christina Barcelino and Jessica Klinger were two seventh graders at Franklin Regional Junior High last year. The two girls say that for for months, they were punched and slapped by a group of about 12 girls. Their parents say eventually that physical abuse escalated to death threats. It's here inside Franklin Regional Middle School in Murraysville that two seventh graders, Christina Barcelino and Jessica Klinger, claim they were more than harassed by a group of 12 girls. Elizabeth Barcelino says repeated pleas to the school for her daughter's protection weren't met. She would hide in the bathroom and eat her lunch on a bathroom stall with her feet up so no one could see her, that she was in there. Every day she was called bitch, that she was going to die. Christina's mother says at one point someone even tried to light her daughter's hair on fire. Audrey Klinger says her daughter Jessica was also terrorized by the same group. They um, surrounded them at the lunch table, Jessica and Christina hit him in the arm, punched him in the face, we're going to get you. The family say the school at one point had an aide to take their daughters from classroom to classroom for protection. But eventually they were told to take the girls out of school for their own protection. The families are now suing the district for $125,000 for everything from failing to protect their children to violating their rights. We talked with the district superintendent, Lee Rick. He says he hasn't seen the suit and has no comment. Now, both teens will be going to different schools next fall. The families say since they filed the suit, other families have started stepping forward with very similar allegations. Now, I tried reaching the school district's attorney several times today, but he did not return my phone calls. Jennifer? Okay, Mary, thanks. And in Lawrence County, police trying to find out how a four-month-old baby died. Police say the girl was found by a family member in a home at the Heritage Hills Trailer Court in Pulaski Township. Police have not yet 
yet released that baby's name. Store owners in Shadyside being extra careful today. They want to make sure no more robberies happen in the area. After several holdups in recent weeks, store owners met with police last night to talk about ways they can better protect themselves and protect their customers. Police have made one arrest already. They are still looking for two more suspects. In Erie, a massive fire wiped out several businesses. You can tell how quickly those flames were spreading. An entire city block on Peach Street gone in just minutes. Nobody was seriously hurt there. Today, people still trying to clean up. Police say they think the fire was accidentally started by two men who were working on a car in a garage. Investigators think their blowtorch may have ignited the car's gas tank. And now for some good news from our neighborhoods. More than a thousand pieces of art went on display at Mercy Hospital today. And the people who came to see it were very impressed with the artist himself as they were with his paintings. Lynn Carson says when you see how he works and hear what he has to say, you'll understand why. When you're Tony Rao using your mouth to guide a paintbrush. I'm just really quite stunned. Defying the norm is what your world is all about. I was born disabled. I never could use my arms or my legs. So basically, I learned to do things with my mouth when a normal child would learn to do things with their hands. Painting was one of the things he learned to do extremely well. The colors on the canvas show a picture, but the method of painting he uses reveals pure pride and determination in his art of self-sufficient living. Your wheelchair breaks down, you better paint a bigger picture. And you know, sure enough, even the wheelchair I'm sitting in came from my art money. I never needed assistance for anything. Take a look for yourself. You can see just how diverse this artist's work is. But one thing never changes. On all of his paintings, there's these three words, never give up. If you can watch me, and maybe the spirit of what we're doing here will uplift you. Hey, my mission is life on this world. is perfect. Then. It's no surprise his art show is called the Tour of Hope displaying more than 1,000 paintings from an artist people remember for his heart as much as his talent. Lynn Carson, KDKA TV News. And if you want to catch the tour of hope, it's not too late. The next showing is tomorrow at Westmoreland Hospital. By the way, Riles does more than paint. In his spare time, he bowls, fishes, and plays ping pong. Pretty incredible. More good news, a victory for a homeless shelter in Westmoreland County. The Victory Chapel in Greensburg now meets fire safety regulations, and that means that the women and the children who live there won't be forced out into the street. The shelter needed a fire alarm system, and donations from nearly 100 people made it possible. Now a plaque will be placed on the building in recognition of their generosity. And call us with good news in your neighborhood. Our number is 412-803-HOME. Coming up. Strong words. A caller threatens a radio talk show host on the air. Now police investigate. Get them while they're fresh. Farmers markets showing up all over the area. So how do the produce prices compare? Is it a natural disaster? The FTC cracking down on a Chinese herb sold to help people lose weight. He's the man the FBI wrongly arrested for the Olympic Park bombing. And now he's striking back. It's Richard Jewell's turn before Congress. What he had to say still ahead. This may be the best day of the year weather-wise, but no, there's more. Yes, we'll take a look with Storm Tracker 2000 and the AccuWeather forecast in just a moment. This fall, the biggest stars in entertainment are on CBS, including Danny Aiello as Della Ventura. So many punks. So little time. This fall, a private investigator is taking back the streets one criminal at a time. If you need me, I'll be around. Danny Aiello is Della Ventura coming to CBS this fall. Giant Eagle teaches its smart shoppers that good nutrition is an important part of feeling good about yourself and doing your best in school. I'm Judy Daw, Giant Eagle's food nutrition advisor. Thinking power starts with a healthy breakfast. Choose the right foods like cereal and milk or bagel and yogurt. Remember to add a glass of juice or a piece of fruit. You need protein, carbohydrate, and even a little fat every morning to keep your thinking power going until lunch. It takes a giant to make good nutrition simple, for kids' sake. You may have noticed an amazing phenomenon. Absolutely. Prices have really dropped on health and beauty items when you use your Giant Eagle Advantage card. And this is where it's happening. The drugstore at Giant Eagle. Just look at these prices. 
This week, get Top Crest filler paper, 200 count for 33 cents. And buy Top Crest theme books, 70 count for just 22 cents. Those are some kind of saving. And that's some kind of card. Don't go away. The hometown advantage will be back in just a minute. Everybody knows what a Cadillac is like. But wait a minute. Here's a whole new idea. It's a luxury revolution from the ground up. Katerra. It's nimble. It's quick. It's the fastest growing luxury car in its class. This is luxury that looks convention in the eye and then winks. Isn't it time you took a test drive? Katerra. It's the caddy that zigs. Lisa Katerra. See your Western Pennsylvania authorized Cadillac Katerra dealer. Well, who is Lisa Katerra? Why does Tums control acid faster than Pepsi AC? Because they work on your stomach acid in totally different ways. Tums Calcium naturally rapidly neutralizes acid so it works fast. Pepsi AC's famotidine has to travel through your bloodstream so it takes at least 40 minutes to block natural acid production. So why does Tums work on acid faster and cost less and Pepsi AC works slower and costs more? Good question. KDK TV News at 5. The Hometown Advantage with Jennifer Ankoviak, Ken Rice, Larry Richard, and Bob Pompiani. Another great one. Best Loved day yet. Out there. Best day yet. Mm -hmm. Today was it. It all came together. The low humidity, <laughs> sunshine, no clouds. It was perfect. Virtually no clouds. Lair, can it get any better than it was today? I don't think I don't, so. I don't think so. And no. Jennifer, you may not know that Ken and I walked out into the plaza in front oh. of her. And Ken... <laughs> was actually, I mean, tickled, excited I, about the weather. I stopped in my tracks. I walked thought that, out of the, it was just gorgeous. I thought that Larry had given up being seen with you in public. He was very brave today. And Although, actually Ken was wearing side. his uh, Foster Grants or whatever. Yeah. All right, yeah. let me there tell you, more yeah. good news to talk about with the sunshine. Let's take a look at the big picture. There's a lot of your neighbors, including neighboring states, enjoying the weather. Let's take a look at the satellite picture here. This is a... Uh, pattern that we rarely see for so many consecutive days, at least here in the Pittsburgh area, and that is a ridge of high pressure from Canada has worked its way south all the way down into the southern states, and so about a third of the nation enjoying really splendid weather for this time of year. How hot was it today? 78 the high at Pittsburgh International, around 80 degrees in town, 83 is the average high for a July 30th. As we get ready to say goodbye to the month of July, mostly sunny at the airport, it is still 78 degrees, relative humidity, look how low, 31%, and there is a breeze yet, and that's comfortable, northeast at 10 miles an hour, still very refreshing outside, and the barometer is falling. Let's take a look at some temperatures where you are at the moment. Downtown at 79, 79 in Morgantown. In Greensburg, it's 78 degrees. Storm Tracker 2000. Well, kind of idling this time of the year, at least this week anyway. Uh, look at that. We'll zoom into the downtown area, and it's what you don't see that counts. In this case, no precipitation. A little look at the three rivers. Now, the national radar picture shows the rain showers over South Carolina, North Carolina, into and uh, moving in the direction of Georgia. Actually, rather soupy anywhere south of this front. You'll see uh, thunderstorms popping up here and there. Again, high pressure keeping us in the clear, and we'll have more of the same tomorrow. Let's take you out to the West Coast. The coast is clear. They're dry out there. Over the next 12 hours, the AccuWeather forecast in three dimensions because that's how weather happens. A few scattered showers as you get to uh, western Texas, and then there's the scattered showers and thunder showers along the Gulf. And we get into our hometown for the rush hour again. You're going to need your sunglasses again and make sure they are official UV uh, approved, you know, for the ultraviolet light. Overnight, though, it's going to be chilly again. 50 degrees for an average. If we hit 50 in Pittsburgh, that would tie a record set in 1968. Looks like 52, 51 yesterday morning, just one, de or this morning, one degree shy of the record for today. And then we'll jump up to 84 tomorrow, but still absolutely beautiful. And the five-day forecast, 86, mostly sunny on Friday. Great right into the big regatta weekend, 88 Saturday. Just a slight chance of a thunder shower. If it happens, it would come and go rather quickly. We think 84 on Sunday and 82 Monday. I don't know. I, I'm really at a loss because for the last few days, I just don't know which day 
should be the pick of the week. That's a rare, rare problem to have. I was going to say that is rare. Save some of these days and pick them later throughout, throughout the year. <laughs> oh, if only it was that easy, Ken. <laughs> All right, thanks. Some encouraging news from the flooding now in Colorado, especially in the town of Fort Collins. Yeah, the good news is that everybody who had been reported missing there is safe. You know, more than eight inches of rain fell on Fort Collins earlier this week, causing water to pool up to 20 feet behind a railroad track bed. When the water began rushing over the top of the tracks, it washed away the hillside and the water swept through two trailer parks. No warning. Five people were killed, dozens more injured. The estimate is up to a thousand homes and businesses damaged. And possibility of still more rain out there today. Mm. Well, he may be one of America's richest funny men, but Jim Carrey's marriage is no laughing matter. News from Hollywood coming up. And who doesn't love it in the summer? Farm fresh fruits and veggies, but are the deals you find at the farmer's market really good ones? Lynn Sawyer explores next. Next, Rosie. Our final friend has arrived. Jennifer Addison in the house. Plus, bewitched, bewitched. You know who's here today? Aaron Murphy. Even Kim Coles remembers the Witch Twitch. All new. Next, Rosie. Thursday at 4. Debbie Thompson is a marketing manager at Long John Silver's. Once a week, she treats her family when takeout becomes take home. It's fast, easy, and she gets to spend more time with the kids. Sit down for a family meal whenever you can for our kids' sake from Long John Silver's. You don't need to make all that noise. You're not like that in the car car. So you are hungry. <laughs> Thank heaven for hush puppies. <laughs> Long John Silvers, the meal we've been missing. This summer, Kennywood is turning back the clock. Because now rides will start one full hour earlier at 11 a.m. That's more time for more rides every day. It's daylight savings only at Kennywood, where thrills are legendary. You're in the through. Sometimes a mama has to step in and give a helping hand. So right now at Century 3 Chevrolet, you can buy brand new 97 Cavaliers for only $99.88. And look what you get. Brand new S10 pickups with LS decor started only $10,988. Mama's got great used cars at Century 3 Chevrolet. 96 Corsicas now for only $169 per month. Don't you wish your mama was helping? Century 3 Chevrolet, Lebanon Church Road, Pittsburgh. Made from the mall. You need a loan? You want to get it from a company that you can trust. I'm Milt Reisman. Advanta is a bank that's been lending money to consumers for over 45 years. The credibility of a big name really meant a lot to us. Homeowners are having great success lowering their monthly payments and improving their financial situation. Even if you've experienced credit problems, you may qualify for an Advanta home equity loan. We can consolidate all your bills into one much lower monthly payment. Our customers love the tax advantages. There are never any application fees, and you can call us anytime. We show them how to save money with a home equity loan that is right for them. Our people are trained to determine your needs. Join other homeowners who found Advanta is a dependable national bank you can trust. We give you the advantage to succeed. Call Advanta anytime at 1-800-929-4552. One of the best things about summer, mm -hmm. farmer's markets. Always. Every day of the week, hundreds of us head out for that farm fresh produce. But is the pick of the day also a good value? Consumer advocate Lynn Sawyer is checking it out, and she's live now at the farmer's mar market in Carrick. Ken and Jen, can you tell I love this? I mean, look at this. Fresh off the farm, fruits and vegetables, herbs. Oh, they smell so good, this basil. And look at these flowers. This is one of 15 farmers markets in and around the city. The farmers come from as far away as Meadville, and this is one road show you don't want to miss. I think it's a shortage on the, on the market today, a little bit of corn shortage. I think we'll sell out early. We'll have a nice day tomorrow. Potatoes were dug yesterday. Most everything else is picked in the mornings. Hey, you buy the beans, you buy the beans, you get potatoes half off. The corn and tomatoes bring them in, but you'll find it all here at the farmer's market. Veggies, fruit, flowers, homemade pies, jams, and more. If corn and tomatoes create the traffic, let's take a look at those prices. Recent grocery ads for corn set the price at three to four dollars a dozen, depending on where you shop. A baker's dozen here at the farmer's market is three fifty, picked this morning. 
If tomatoes are your weakness, we saw ads at the supermarket for $1.50 a pound. Here at the market, they sell for about $2 to two fifty dollars a quart. Tough to compare when they're measured differently, but the farmers tell me that translates to about 90 cents a pound. How do the prices compare overall? Well, just ask any farmer. The prices are a lot lower at the farmer's market than at the grocery stores. Do you shop here a lot? Yeah, every week. <laughs> Why? I shop every week. Because I love the corn, I love the flowers, I love it all. It's tough to compare this to the supermarket. The atmosphere here is priceless, but most of the prices we've seen seem to be offer bargains. But like I said, it's priced differently by the basket, not by the pound. Quickly, beets, cabbage, cukes, they were half the price in the supermarket of the supermarket price. And of course, the ever popular zucchini are all in good supply. Chambersburg peaches are starting to come in and blueberries, raspberries, July apples, and muskmelons round out the fruit selection. And of course, the herbs. Herbs are definitely less expensive here. You can buy big bunches of herbs for anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar. Now, before we go, you have to come over here and see this. See all these guys in the red shirt, including this guy right here? They're all members of the Joe King family. He and his wife, Lisa, have eight kids, seven boys, one girl, and they come to the farmer's market every night at a different location. And everybody works, right? <laughs> Even the ones with no teeth. Yes. So if you would like to find out where there's a farmer's market near you, Ken and Jen, you just can look in the Post-Gazette on Thursdays in the food section, and they have a list of all the farmer's markets, their times and locations all around town. Have fun. Uh, we will. It sounds great and looks very good there today, oh, too. you can smell this basil right there, I'm can't sure. you? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Lynn. <laughs> In today's health team report with the weather, as hot as it was this past weekend, your kids, no doubt, were bugging you to do some swimming. But too much time in the water can mean trouble in the form of swimmer's ear. It's an infection caused when the ear canal gets wet and stays wet, and it can be painful. It's usually treated with antibiotics, but there are ways you can prevent swimmer's ear. Take a 5 to 10 minute break each hour from swimming. Tilt your head after getting out of the water so your ear canals can drain. And if the doctor says it's okay, try putting a few drops of rubbing alcohol in your ear canal after swimming to speed up the drying. In other health news, makers of the diet supplement Herbal Ecstasy have agreed to include a warning on the label. It would warn of potential damage to the heart and nervous system. The main ingredient in Herbal Ecstasy is ephedra, a compound from plants that's been used by the Chinese for centuries. But at least 17 deaths and 800 injuries have been linked to that drug. Now a few bits of entertainment news for you. Arnold Schwarzenegger hits the big 5-0 today. He jokes that one-third of his life is over now. Schwarzenegger says he's in great shape and he hasn't slowed down a bit since his heart surgery last April. Meantime, though, the romance between Jim Carrey and his new bride, Lauren Hawley, seems to have stalled. Now They've only been married for 10 months, but Hawley has filed for divorce. She's claiming irreconcilable differences and is asking for spousal support and attorney's fees. Shouldn't be a problem for Carrie, however, though, who made $20 million just for starring in The Cable Guy. Now, Marv Albert at the center of another controversy. This one involves a murder. That's next. A local radio talk show host threatened on the air what the caller said and why police now need some help. Plus, are UPS workers about to strike? What it could mean to your packages waiting to be delivered next. It's fast, it's fun, it's the Berg's biggest party, and we'll have a live preview from the middle of the Ohio River on the deck of the Majestic. Join the party because you got a regatta. Thursday at 7.30 right here on KDKA. Tomorrow, dressed up, dressed down. Who's the real professional? Some say casual dress means casual performance, but others disagree. There's no equating dress with uh, work effort. David Highfield takes you inside two companies with two very different dress codes. See for yourself, does fashion really matter? Tomorrow on KDK TV News at 11, the hometown advantage. Best Feeds Garden Centers recommend the insect repelling wristband, bug band, keeps the bugs away when you're outdoors. This week, only $1.99. Best Feeds, your hometown gardening expert. Happy Happier birthdays start with a Dairy Queen frozen cake. They're DQ through and through. Live.
Critics are calling it one of the best shows of the year. Traveling the planet now and coming to the Coca-Cola Star Lake Amphitheater August 11th. Tickets are on sale now. Lawn seats only $15. Produced by Coca-Cola Star Lake in association with the deceased Angler. Uncompromised standards. That's what you expect and that's what you get with a hometown advantage. Balanced and fair coverage. It's important to you and it's important to us. We won't settle for less and neither should you. Accuracy is our number one priority. It means getting the story and getting it right. And this is our home too. So we promise to balance the hard news with the good news from our neighborhoods. Balanced and fair coverage. That's the advantage. The hometown advantage. Did you know you should drink three glasses of milk every day to get the calcium you need? May we suggest another way? Introducing Uncle Ben's Calcium Plus Rice. One serving has as much calcium as a glass of milk. Uncle Ben's Calcium Plus is a delicious way to give you and your family more calcium. We think everyone would agree. Well, almost everyone. Uncle Ben's Calcium Plus. Original or instant. Good cooks cook with Uncle Ben's. Watching KDK TV News at 5. The Hometown Advantage with Jennifer Ankoviak, Ken Rice, Larry Richard, and Bob Pompiani. You're, you're making a threat here, is what you're no, doing. No, I'm not making a threat. Yeah, you I'm are. I promise. Heard it on KDK Radio. A caller threatens a talk show host, and now police are involved. New at 5:30, radio talk show hosts like to get their listeners riled up a little, but things got a little scary yesterday on KDKA. Yeah, and tonight police are investigating a caller to Mike Pintech's show. A caller who said he was a cop and threatened the host. The caller told Pintech he was a police officer from Kilbuck Township, an area known for its use of speed traps. Pintech, you see, is always urging his listeners to notify him of such traps. There's a lot of police departments talking about you, uh -huh. so you go ahead. Yeah. Uh, right, you're be on notice that we're going to nail you, and when we find you, you're we're making a throw threat you in here. A dungeon. You're, you're making a threat here. Is what you're no, doing? No, I'm not making a threat. Yeah, I'm you are. A promise. The name the caller gave checked out. It was that of an actual Kilbuck Township cop. But was it really the cop who had called? Today, the radio station had Kilbuck's police chief come down and listen to a tape of the call. Uh, it definitely was not him. I would uh, bet my career. I don't believe it was a policeman from anywhere that made that call. KDKA gave the Kilbuck chief a tape of the call. Now, perhaps with FBI help, they'll try to figure out who it was. At the very least, the chief says it's a criminal case of impersonating a police officer. It did scare me, yes. I mean, it would scare anybody. If, if, some, if you say you're not scared of something like that, you're crazy. You have to take this seriously because there are wacky people out there. I mean, ask Versace. Well, you can't. He's dead, right? Okay. Killbuck's police chief says the caller is probably somebody trying to make his police force look bad. Now, whether shipping or receiving, if you're counting on a package getting to its destination, you may have a little problem. Union workers from United Parcel Service are threatening to go on strike if they don't reach an agreement with the company by midnight tomorrow. Jackie Smith is standing by at News Desk 2 with the details. Jackie? Well, Jennifer, the Teamsters Union and executives from UPS are in Washington, D.C. right now trying to work something out. But if they don't, UPS workers across the country could walk off the job. Now, here in western Pennsylvania and West Virginia, more more than 80% of the 5,000 or so workers are union members. A spokesperson for the local union was in D.C., but I did talk with people from UPS, and they are hopeful something can be worked out. But still, UPS is warning its customers about the possibility of a walkout. At this time, we're informing them that we cannot guarantee any uninterruptions as far as the delivery is concerned, um, and what their options are at that time, whether they want to upgrade uh, their packages to get to a certain location at a certain time. Now, of course, you do have, the, do have the option of sending your packages through the post office or other delivery companies, but the people from those companies say that if UPS does go on strike, they won't be able to absorb all of the overflow and still get the packages there on time. Okay, Jackie, let us know what happens. Thanks. The future of the LTV plant in Hazelwood will be the focus of a meeting tomorrow here in Pittsburgh. The company to sit down with the United Steelworkers Union. LTV, as you know, plans to close its facility in Hazelwood at the end of the year because it can no longer meet air pollution standards. The union hopes to convince the company to extend its life. 
Based on yesterday's meeting in Washington, D.C., though, that seems unlikely. Federal, state, and local officials discussed the plant. Our money editor, Bill Flanagan, was there and reports the general consensus is the plant cannot be saved. LTV plans to meet again with public officials in November to map out a future for that site. Well, a few months ago, it was in danger of closing as well, but now Polk Hospital plans to hire 25 new employees. The new director says Polk needs a larger full-time staff as soon as possible. Polk's had its share of problems recently when the health department threatened to take away the center's license after the deaths of three patients. The director says the hospital still has to overcome past events, but will stay open. Well, late word out of Washington, Congress another step closer to approving the balanced budget deal. This afternoon, the House approved the budget by a vote of 346 to 85. The Senate is now debating the measure and could vote on it as early as this evening. And sportscaster Marv Albert in the center of yet another controversy. WCBS in New York is reporting his name was in the little black book of a dominatrix found murdered in her apartment in New York over the weekend. The woman was found shot to death. Police say they found whips, chains, and the book with the names of hundreds of politicians in her apartment. Albert's spokesperson will neither confirm nor deny that report. Will she or won't she? New information about Autumn Jackson's willingness to participate in a paternity test. And it's the worst accident some people there have ever seen. Nine of the victims are children. Next, Rosie. Our final friend has arrived. Jennifer Aniston in the house. Plus, witch be witched. You know who's here today? Tabitha! It's Aaron Murphy. Even Kim Coles remembers the witch twitch. All new. Next, Rosie. Thursday at 4. When they're little, parents teach their children to play nice. So who taught them to do this? Just think. If you see news happening, call 800-TV2-2222 or star TV2 on your cell phone. Honda 97 clearance has arrived. And just when you could use a new car, timing is everything, isn't it? 1997 marks two decades of the Pittsburgh Regatta. And to celebrate, your greater Pittsburgh Pontiac dealers are offering the Regatta 20th Anniversary Grand Am GT. Power sunroof, an awesome six-speaker sound system with CD player and graphic equalizer, the special anniversary edition trim package, and for a limited time, $1,500 cash back or special financing. The Regatta 20th Anniversary Grand Am GT. See your greater Pittsburgh Pontiac dealers. And don't miss the 20th anniversary of the Shop and Save Pittsburgh Three Rivers Regatta. Don't touch that zapper. The hometown advantage will be back in just a minute. I lost 12 pounds in seven days. I have an incredible increase in energy. It's finally here. L.A. Weight Loss Centers revolutionizing the way people lose weight. L.A. Weight Loss Centers offers the Jet Start program, the fastest way to get you started losing weight. Losing eight pounds in one week is fantastic. You're going to lose 10 to 15 pounds in one week, so... Why not? It's kind of silly not to. Grand opening, Greensburg and McMurray. Now $6 a week. LA Weight Loss Centers, 1-800-526-SLIM. They say over five years, a Saturn sedan has a lower cost of ownership than most other cars in its class, saving you like four cents a mile. Now, how can this be? Uh, gas, it costs a lot with Saturn. You don't use that much. Next. Maintenance and repairs, they're not a lot. Next. Plus, the low price. Okay, um, I guess that wraps it up. Bill, can I have my lawnmower back? Next show is tomorrow at 2. Catch up on what happened while you were sleeping tomorrow morning with KD. New information concerning the Florida caretaker who stumbled upon Andrew Cunanan. And yeah, that's uh, Top Star Look at Stories making news across the nation. Garbage found on the Miami houseboat where Cunanan committed suicide does not back up a woman's claim that for Fernando Carrera was taking food to Cunanan days before his death. The only food-related trash police found was pop cans, walnut shells, and an old cracker box. 
Pereira said he was making a routine check of the houseboat when he realized someone was inside. And you knew it was bound to happen. ABC has a movie in the works about Cunanan's life and what made him do what he did. It's hired a picture company to come up with the script. Even if the movie is produced, it won't air until next year at the earliest. The gauntlet has been thrown, but will Autumn Jackson accept the challenge? Jackson's lawyer says a paternity test to see if Bill Cosby really is her father is not out of the question. But Jackson's mother tells CNN it won't happen. Yesterday, Cosby said he had his blood drawn and is ready to take the test and challenge Jackson and her mother to do the same. Well, it could be the worst tragedy ever seen in a small community in Michigan. Nine children and two women were killed when their pickup truck hit a dump truck carrying a backhoe. The woman who was driving reportedly had a suspended license and ran a stop sign. Six of the victims were riding in the back of the pickup. They were returning from a family outing. The driver of the dump truck was not hurt. Four missing bullets test fired in 1968 from the rifle believed used to kill Martin Luther King Jr. have now been found. The bullets were last examined 20 years ago before they were lost. They were found last week in a storage area at the FBI in Washington. The bullets will now be compared with the death slug removed from King, as well as to 18 bullets test fired from that rifle in May. Those recent tests were inconclusive on whether the bullet that killed King came from convicted assassin James Earl Ray's rifle. Well, they weren't just high on life. At a mansion in Bel Air, California, sheriff's deputies found 5,000 marijuana plants growing inside. The guy who lives in that mansion is an outspoken supporter of Proposition 215, a California law that allows marijuana for medicinal purposes. If you're keeping count at home, it's now two in a row. Two gorgeous days. How's tomorrow shaping up? Larry's next with the AccuWeather forecast. And cats may have nine lives, but we found a dog with at least two. How he survived a lightning strike coming up. Tomorrow, are you ready for some summer fun? Michelle Michael shows you where you can find this weekend's hot spots. Hometown Summer 97. Tomorrow on KDK-TV News at 5, the hometown advantage. 1997 marks two decades of the Pittsburgh Regatta. And to celebrate, your Greater Pittsburgh Pontiac dealers are offering the Regatta 20th Anniversary Grand Am GT. Power sunroof, an awesome six-speaker sound system with CD player and graphic equalizer, the special anniversary edition trim package, and for a limited time, $1,500 cash back or 2.9% APR GMAC financing for up to 60 months. The Regatta 20th Anniversary Grand Am GT. Now with cash back for special financing and only at your Greater Pittsburgh Hobby Act dealers. Popcorn! Get your popcorn here! Popcorn! Get your popcorn! New popcorn munchers. Okay, so they're not like other popcorn. Just $1.79 from Long John Silver's. Hey, two shrimp over here. Meerkats at the new Discovery Pavilion in Kids' Kingdom at the Pittsburgh Zoo. Let yourself feel how you want to feel. 1-800-97-JETTY. We're right here by your side and we're for real. 1-800-97-JETTY. Don't miss out. This is your last chance to lose 20 pounds for $20 plus the cost of food. Call 1-800-97-JENNY today. You won't just lose your win. 1-800-97-JENNY. 1-800-97-JENNY. Some companies can survive a major loss when an employee has drug problems. How's your cash flow? The AccuWeather Advantage is brought to you by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries.
This is the last weekend of our wall-to-wall -wall clearance sale and your last weekend to take advantage of these incredibly low prices. We have reduced prices even more for this final weekend. Plus, you still get one full year to pay. There are no gimmicks. The factory has shipped our new samples and we must sell off many floor samples now. And you still get one year free financing. So buy today. Take advantage of these great prices and let us sit on the bill for an entire year. Offer ends Monday at 9 p.m. Welcome back to the AccuWeather Advantage. This is one of those day, day, hey, let me try that again. This is one of those days that you dream about in the winter. Got ahead of myself. Yeah, you know, when it was cloudy and snowing and freezing cold, another beautiful day. Let's take a look at Storm Tracker 2000. Not much to show you out there as we zoom into a closer shot of our lovely rivers here in Pittsburgh. I can also slide you to the north along the Ohio. Take you down to Sewickley and Coriopolis. Everybody enjoying the beautiful weather, I trust. National radar map shows some rain, but it's nowhere near here. Got to go a few states south to pick up any moisture at all into the Carolinas. And this is just on the north side of a front that is stretching all the way across the southern states and on up the western ridge of the, or the eastern ridge of the Rockies. And that's uh, about where it ends as far as the high pressure, about a third of the nation enjoying this beautiful weather and we're gonna have more of the same tomorrow i just don't know how to break the news to you folks sunshine high pressure still in control more scattered thunder showers in the south and as we look out to the west a few scattered thunder showers inland that's about it over the next 12 hours let's bring you up from the south in the islands man we'll come up through florida typical florida day sunshine hot humid afternoon scattered thunder showers That'll be the case uh, tomorrow as well, right on through the south. And as we fly over the front, you'll see it start to clear up as we get closer to home. It should be another beautiful day for you to start tomorrow. It's hard to believe that July is ending tomorrow, but what a way to go. Look at the highs. We'll be in the low end or mid 80s, 86 in Morgantown, Uniontown. Look for a high of 85 in Oil City North, 80 degrees. Let's take a look at uh, the AccuFact tonight. Now, this is a little departure from a, a weather AccuFact, but I thought it was worth mentioning because without this guy, we couldn't be doing what we're doing now. He was born on this day. In 1889, his name was Vladimir Zaworkin, a Russian man who was an engineer who came to the States in the early 30s, and he made the first, what? The first practical television. He is considered to be the father of TV. Now, so excited is our staff that it's his birthday that we actually have a hand-carved wooden trophy that honors Mr. Zaworkin that we pass out every year at our annual golf event. I just thought you'd like to know and share in our joy and excitement. Now, to recap, the AccuWeather forecast clear and cool again tonight. 52 the low. The record is 50, set back in 1965. Tomorrow, sunshine. Oh, huh. Another great day. 84 with sunshine. More of the same on Friday. 86 the high. The AccuWeather extended forecast into the Shop and Save Pittsburgh. Three rivers were got a weekend. Saturday, 88. Slight chance of a thunder shower into Sunday. The high 84. Looks like a pretty decent weekend, all things considered. 82 on Monday. That's the AccuWeather forecast right to the minute. I hope you enjoy. Well, it's a beautiful day to be anywhere outside. So Bob Pompiani is outside up in the Latrobe area where our Pittsburgh Steelers are in camp getting ready for a little scrimmage. Bob? Hey, Larry, you're a very popular man out here. You know that. They love you out here in Latrobe. Uh, give Greg Lloyd a little kiss for me. <laughs> I will. They said it's an outstanding weather forecast. They listen to you only, and they know they're getting the right stuff. Yeah, we're here tonight because the Steelers have their annual uh, scrimmage at Latrobe High School, and uh, this is an opportunity for the people out here to come out, not only to watch some football, but also get a chance to get some autographs. And you know, the one thing the Steelers don't have is a professional cheerleading unit. But when they come here, they have an adoptive team. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, the Latrobe Wildcat Cheerleaders. Take it away, girls. Go, go, go! 
<laughs> See that? Even though they have a little orange and black, the, the colors need to be amended a little bit, but they have the right spirit out here. And uh, they'll be here tonight as the Steelers uh, put on a little scrimmage for the fans. They're supposed to arrive here sometime around 6.30. Uh, we'll have more on that coming up. And, and Larry, we're going to talk to a guy tonight, uh, Errol Holmes, who's a linebacker. You know, a lot of people uh, fretted the day that Chad Brown left, and they said, well, the Steelers are going to be a little weak at linebacker. But I'll tell you something, they have a lot of depth, a lot of talent, and number 50 is one of the principal guys. We'll talk to him. And you should also know there is a newest, highest-paid quarterback in the NFL. His name is no longer Brett Favre. Steve Young got a new six-year, $45 million deal today, even though he's 36 years of age. So we'll talk to him about that. And I wonder now, as your brother-in-law may be uh, looking at these and saying, hey, uh, it's time for me to get a little bit more money? Uh, <laughs> you should be his agent. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do you have a brother-in-law? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Now, does, does your brother-in-law call you and discuss his personal business Yes, he affairs? does. Does he? <laughs> yeah. Mine <All> doesn't. <laughs> okay. He no, doesn't I... call. He doesn't write. But well, anyway. I'll tell you what. For the record, he deserves as much money as those guys get and, and more. So, you know, let him know that, okay? But it's still less than Albert Bell's getting. Is that correct? That's still, yeah. Albert Mel still is number one in all, well, actually not. Shaquille O'Neal, if you look at the NBA. But the point is, it's all getting out of whack, and uh, I'm envious. Well, listen, w one question uh, real quick. The, the deadline for baseball trades is tomorrow, right? Yes, and tomorrow. And no, there's not much going on at this point. Uh, there's still some talk with, um, you know, the American League about uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, the catcher for Texas, going to Baltimore. Mark McGuire, hot rumors that he's going to the St. Louis Cardinals, but nothing has been consummated. As far as the Pirates, they're still looking for some help in the bullpen. No major names here. Bob Patterson was mentioned, perhaps even John Smiley, but nothing major. So uh, we still have a day to go, and, and you do normally get a lot of last-minute deals. So we'll keep you abreast of that, and we'll have more coming up at 6 o'clock. All right, Bob, thanks a lot. Looking forward right. to uh, highlights tonight at 11 from our little Steelers scrimmage. Let's go over to uh, Ken, who, again, was enjoying the day very much, and I assume Jennifer as well. Sure. Yes. You know who I don't think may have been enjoying the day, Larry, is uh, Coach Coward. Didn't I read where he was hoping for some hot weather? Sorry, Coach. Yeah. Okay. Larry's trying to make everybody happy, but he failed the coach. He, uh, he came close, though. <laughs> well, Look at him. Just about everybody. Thanks, Larry. Well, he was a hero and then a suspect and then exonerated. Today, Richard Jewell becomes vindicated as he goes before Congress to talk about his mistreatment by the FBI. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, dressed up, dressed down. Who's the real professional? Some say casual dress means casual performance, but others disagree. There's no equating dress with uh, work effort. David Highfield takes you inside two companies with two very different dress codes. See for yourself, does fashion really matter? Tomorrow on KDK TV News at 11, the hometown advantage. Xavier and Emily are two happy kids, but these kids have spina bifida, and they need extra help. Your help. I'm John Sagerwald. And I'm John Whitman. KDK TV2 and the Pittsburgh Steelers have teamed up again to ask for your help when you go shopping. When you buy any of these products from specially marked shelves, you'll help to fund programs for children with spina bifida in our hometown. With your help for children like Xavier and Emily, dreams can come true. Thank you. Thank you. When I was growing up in Pittsburgh, my father always told me to do business with people who are reliable and stand behind their product. Some things never change. That's right, Dad. That's why I work with First Plus. They're experienced, dependable, and dedicated. They'll get you the best loan to meet your needs. If you're a homeowner looking to consolidate bills or make home improvements, call First Plus. You can count on them to make the loan that's just right for you. And I thought you only listened to your mother. <laughs> call First Plus at 1-800-510-PLUS. Dave Thomas has taken to the road for Wendy's to show people why our hamburgers are so delicious. Hamburgers, everyone? Mmm, man, this is great. How do you keep the toppings so crisp when the beef is so hot and juicy? We make it fresh. And that's what makes us different. This is a great combination. And Wendy's makes every hamburger fresh like this. That's right. We make every classic single, double, and triple right when you order it. And I really like your new Kaiser bun. The picture looks a little tired. No way. Wait. So come get a Wendy's classic hamburger today and taste the difference fresh makes. Everybody knows what a Cadillac is like, but wait a minute. Here's a whole new idea. It's a luxury revolution from the ground up. Katera. It's nimble, it's quick, it's the fastest growing luxury car in its class. This is luxury that looks convention in the eye and then winks. Isn't it time you took a test drive? Katera. It's the caddy that zigs. Lisa Katera. See your Western Pennsylvania authorized Cadillac Katera dealer. Well, who is Lisa Katera? Today we're giving away Palaner All Fruit made with fruit and fruit juice. Okay.
Slime Smuckers preserves made with fruit and more than 50% granulated sugar and corn syrup. Why would I want that? Because it's free. Yeah, but you said this one has lots of sugar and corn syrup. Yes. And platter is fruit and fruit juice. You betcha. Hello. Planner all fruit. Why not have it all? Are you okay, dear? A deadly suicide bombing in Jerusalem today. 14 people were killed, including the two bombers. It happened in an open vegetable market. The Islamic group Hamas is now claiming responsibility for that attack, and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat is promising to put his government's full effort into countering those bombings. Now, he says the FBI can't be trusted and the truth must come out. Richard Jewell was in Washington to voice his frustrations over how the FBI treated him during the investigation of the Olympic Park bombing. CBS correspondent Byron Pitts has more on Jewell's meeting today with Congress. It should be the truth and the whole truth. For the first time, Richard Jewell testified before a House subcommittee about the longest 88 days of his life. The two and a half months he claims he was lied to, lied on, and laughed at. A talk radio host on WABC Radio in New York City publicly demanded my execution. Through it all, the FBI never had the integrity to tell the world that the media was wrong. In Atlanta last summer, there were two explosions. What? The bomb that killed at Centennial Olympic Park and the allegations three days later that ruined a man's reputation. That's when an unnamed source said this unknown security guard was the primary suspect. Monday during a Senate hearing, the director of the FBI admitted his agency likely violated Richard Jewell's constitutional rights during that first interrogation. At that same hearing, the Justice Department released a report on the Jewell matter, finding investigators acted without malice. Jewell called that report one more lie and demanded someone investigate the Justice Department. The Justice Department cannot be trusted to investigate itself because that report is also a lie. It is filled with false statements, half-truths, and gross distortions of the truth. Lawmakers seem sympathetic and each one apologized. But if anyone is justified in being bitter and angry, it is you, sir because you were recklessly yanked around and yanked around and from pillar to post. But I think we're all embarrassed about it. It's unclear what, if anything, the House subcommittee will do now beyond possibly calling the FBI director in to testify. Byron Pitts, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, a man's devotion to his dog. Pretty awesome springing into action after the dog was hit by lightning, saving the dog's life. Wait till you hear how when we come back. The I-Team investigates and gets results. If you have a tip for the I-Team, let us know. Just call 1-800-TIP-KDKA. The hometown advantage. Next, Rosie. Our final friend has arrived. Jennifer Aniston in the house. Plus, bewitched. Bewitched. You know who's here today? Tabitha! It's Aaron Murphy. Even Kim Coles remembers the witch twitch. All new. Next, Rosie. Thursday at 4. Your local Chevrolet dealers want you to watch the Steelers in luxury. If you're 21 years old, you could win a luxury box August 17th at Three Rivers Stadium. You and 12 of your closest friends could watch the Steelers versus the Lions. Just send a postcard with your name, address, age, and daytime phone number to Chevy Dealers, Football Bash Sweepstakes, care of KDKA TV2, 1 Gateway Center, Pittsburgh, 15222. Entries must be postmarked by Friday, August 1st, 1997. Bell Atlantic makes a simple point. Okay, the lobster. Me. That's twenty-two fifty. The burger. Ah, uh, here. Twenty-two fifty. Small salad. Me. Twenty-two fifty for you. Simple, but one price doesn't fit all. So unlike other phone companies, Bell Atlantic offers a choice of local and regional toll calling plans and soon long distance plans for people who call a lot and a little. Your coffee, madam. <laughs> That's gonna hurt. That's twenty-two fifty. There's a big cover-up performed by millions of people every day. People who have ugly nail fungus. It turns nails colors, makes them thick or brittle. But now you may be able to go barefoot without embarrassment. With more beautiful nails. Healthier, clear nails. You 
See, nail fungus lives deep under the nail at the base. That's why it's so hard to get rid of. But by calling this number now, you'll receive a free video and learn how it may be possible to get beautiful, healthy nails back. Because today, your doctor has effective treatments that attack the fungus right where it lives. So call to uncover the truth about nail fungus and get your free video on nail care and treatments. The sooner you call, the sooner you may be able to go barefoot without embarrassment. When they're little, parents teach their children to play nice. So who taught them to do this? Just think. You know, they say dog is man's best friend, but it was really the other way around for one pooch in North Carolina. Brownie the dog was outside in a storm when he was hit by lightning. The dog was shocked and started to have a heart attack when his owner had a brainstorm. Gave Brownie one of his own heart pills and the dog perked right up. Some modern medicine and a little tender loving care and Brownie, as you see there, is good as new. That'll do it for our 5 o'clock report today. Thanks for joining us. Now stay tuned as the news continues at 6 with Stacy and Jennifer. You're watching KDK TV News at 6. Good evening. He disappeared more than three years ago, leaving behind a blood-stained car and mysterious tapes for his wife and three.